Okay, so I'm going to show you some what I might call data wrangling tips. The example I'm using is from the United States, but really this applies no matter what you're doing if you're dealing with numbers and text and things that don't quite go right. So follow along and hopefully you'll learn some useful tips. I've got on my screen a counties file for the US. Let me just zoom in to the lower 48. We can see there's counties here. And if I select the layer and then open the attribute table, we can see a number of columns. I've prepared this file with some different columns just to demonstrate a few things. So we have the name of the county. So we've got Clay County at the top. Each county has something called a FIPS code. And this is pretty standard across the world. We have areas and they'll be designated some kind of numeric or alphanumeric code. In this case, Clay County, the FIPS code is 027. And in the US, that's the Federal Information Processing Standards Code, but it's fairly standard across the world for areas to have codes. So this is 027 and that is in Alabama and the FIPS code for Alabama is 01. You'll see just an FID, just a standard field you get in GIS. We can ignore that. And then I've also prepared two columns that have kind of the same information, but it looks a bit different. To explain that, let me close this and I will just double click the layer name to open up the properties. And I'll go to fields to show us information about those columns. We can see that the state FIPS column is a text field and the county one is also a text field, also known as string. So there's two columns. They contain numbers, but the number is really just a code. So it's stored as text. We've got the county name. That's also text. And then this is often what we see whether we're working in something like Excel or QGIS or indeed any other GIS software. Sometimes these numbers get imported as integers. So just a, a round number. And that's what these columns are. They're integers. Now, why is that important? Because if I open up the table again, sometimes when these integers are imported, we'll lose the leading zeros. And if we want to create a FIPS code that has the state FIPS code and the county FIPS code combined, losing those leading zeros is going to lead to problems. So first of all, I'll demonstrate how we can combine the first two fields to create a new field that's five digits long and it has the zeros in it. And it's very simple in QGIS. When we've got the table open, we can just click on the abacus button to open the field calculator. I'll call this one County FIPS TXT. So I'm going to create a new field here called County FIPS and I'm adding TXT at the end just to indicate for this demonstration that's going to be a text field. So I need to change the output field type to be text. And all I'm going to do is concatenate the first and the second columns here. So the state FIPS text column and the county FIPS text column. To do that, I'll need to look in the middle section of this window and I find fields and values and I expand it. I'll double click the field that I want to add first, so state FIPS. I'll then hit this button, which will concatenate the strings, join two things together. And then I'll double click the county FIPS one. And when I do that, I'll see a little preview that shows me what the output's going to look like for different counties in the example. So it should be five characters long. In this case, it's all digits. And if I click OK, it should work. Before I click OK, I always just double check that I've put things in right. So it's going to be a text string. That's a name. It's fine. You could call it anything, but I'm going to just call it a sensible name. And yes, everything looks good. So I'm going to click on OK. It will add a new field and then I can stop editing by clicking the little pencil icon. Then I hit save. And what we have now is a new column called County FIPS text. And we can see if I sort it, the counties have the FIPS code with a leading zero followed by the County FIPS code with a leading zero. So Otago County, Alabama has 01001. But let's look at what happens if we had done it a different way and concatenated 
the two integer strings. I'll do this quickly. Click the new field button. And what I'm going to do, I'll call this one county fips int, just to indicate it's an integer. So I'm going to concatenate the integer columns. So I go to the middle section, fields and values, double click the first state FIPS column that I'm using, which is a numeric uh, integer. Click string concatenation, double click on the county FIPS integer. And then we see in the preview this time, there's no leading zeros because there's no leading zeros in our columns. And when I click OK, we can see the difference. Now, if I save this, I stop editing and click save, and then I sort the new column. If I scroll down, we can see the difference. Now, you might think that's not a problem, but look at this example where we come across a duplicate. Because the leading zeros are omitted, we have two that have got code 111. We have another two that have got code 121. 123 is a duplicate. So we have many duplicates. So sometimes when you do this, you don't have unique codes for each area and that's a problem when we're doing analysis in many instances so what i would do if i had these two first columns i could just concatenate them and that's fine but many times what you'll have is you might have a state fips code and a county fips code that don't have leading zeros in them and if you want to recreate them with leading zeros in qgis here's how you can do it so same method as before, we open the field calculator, give the field a name, I'm just going to call this one County Phipps New, I'm going to store it as a text field. And here's what I need to do. If I just do what I did before, we won't have any leading zeros. So first of all, I'm going to type in LPAD for left pad. If I hit the search box here and then type LPAD, it shows you what it does. It takes a string. You can determine how wide you want it to be and also what you want to fill it with. I'll just show you how it works. So the field I want to use first of all, is I'm using the integer field, so the ones that aren't right. State FIPS, and I want it to be a width of two because the state FIPS codes are two digits wide. And then I put a comma in and a zero, and I close the brackets. So what's happening there is, this will make sure that the first part, which has state FIPS, are always two digits wide. And if it's not two digits wide, it'll fill it with zeros. So if it's one, it will do 01. And if I scroll through the previews until I get to an example that's got just one digit in it, like this one, Clay County, we can see it's been filled with a zero. I'm going to click on string concatenation and I'm going to do the same thing with the County Phipps integer column. L pad, open bracket, the string I want to use here is the integer one. I want it to be three wide because that's how wide our county FIPS column should be. Our county FIPS code should be. It should be three characters. It's, if, it's, if it's one, it should have two zeros before it. So I'll put in a zero to fill. And again, we can see the preview. If I look at any of the counties, like Adair County, it's going to give us 40 for zero for the state FIPS code. And then it's going to add in zero, zero, one for the county FIPS code. And that's because I've got a three in here and a zero in here. And when I click OK, making sure it's a text field, click OK, then we get the correct county FIPS code. And that was generated from the, the column which doesn't have a leading zero for state FIPS and it doesn't have a leading zero for county FIPS, but we've added them in using a little expression. Finally, we'll click the little pencil icon and then we'll save that. 
Now, I've just used this as an example for US counties, but you can use LPAD in lots of different situations, but sometimes when you need leading zeros in, but they've already been omitted, and your data is already in QGIS, this is a way you can deal with it very easily. And because each state FIPS and county FIPS combination is unique, you're not going to have the problem of duplicates. So if I sort like I did before, when we had some duplicates here, 111 and 111, instead we have unique codes. If I scroll down to another example, the ones that were 123 here are now unique codes, as they should be because we added in the leading zeros for the state FIPS and the county FIPS. Let me deselect that. So if you ever have this issue with FIPS codes for the US or area codes anywhere else in the world where you need to add back in leading zeros, that's how you can do it in QGIS. You don't need to click the add field button from the table. It's also available here. And just as a reminder, if you've done it already, then in the field calculator, you do also have the recent section, which remembers your recent expressions. If I double click that here, it will add it back in and we can see what we did. So LPAD is the key thing there. The first number in the LPAD expression is how wide it is. And the next one is what you're filling it with. In this case, we were filling it with zero. So hopefully you'll find that useful in your own work and it can save you a headache or two.